Don't take every challenge as a problem. Don't take every challenge as a problem. Take every problem as a challenge. Hello my shimmering stars. I Shora Grover welcomes you to our victory batch. Students, this is going to be our last lecture for the organic chemistry of class 11th in our victory batch. And yes, I hope so you have covered all the lectures of the organic chemistry and that was useful to you. So students, let us proceed towards our the last chapter that is environmental chemistry. Now students, this chapter is basically related with your you know previous classes that uh, in which we learnt about pollution. And this topic basically is basically a kind of an, an uh, you know awareness that is being provided to us regarding our atmosphere, regarding earth, right? So we are going to deal it in a quite uh, different manner. We are going to take our NCRTs with us. Okay, I want you all to take out your NCRTs, keep it in a side and you know uh, keep marking the points which I am going to tell you and if there is any another different point you can also add in your NCRT. So this will be a best way to deal with this chapter, right? So first of all students, what do you mean by environmental pollution? Now I think that there is no need to define environmental pollution because you all know very easily what is environmental pollution any you know undesirable change that is occurring in our environment that basically causes a harmful effect on plants animals and we all human beings so that undesirable you know changes that are occurring you know due to which something is happening in our environment that is basically environmental pollution right so if i'm going to define it is it is the effect of undesirable changes in our surroundings that have harmful effects on plants animals and human beings this is environmental pollution now students we need to know about pollutants now what do you mean by pollutants these are those substances which causes pollution which are responsible for causing pollution so these are referred to as pollutants okay and this is harmful for environment why it is harmful for environment because it is causing pollution right now students it is further categorized into two types one is biodegradable and another one is non-biodegradable what do you mean by biodegradable and non-biodegradable substances? You know, the pollutants are, you know, natural organic substances which can be decomposed by biological processes. They are biodegradable. Pollutants which are natural substances which can be decomposed or either converted you can say by biological process by biological process is known as biodegradable substances or biodegradable pollutants. Clear students? Now some of the examples for biodegradable, I would say domestic waste, okay. If I would say paper, I would say wood, all of these lie under the category of biodegradable. Other than this, you can take vegetable stuff, plants, okay, all of these. So we can write over here, if you want to write the example, it can be domestic waste, paper, would all of these lie under the category of biodegradable now if i talk about what do you mean by non-biodegradable basically these are the ones which cannot be decomposed by bacteria you know which cannot be decomposed example we can say ddt polythene you know insecticide pesticide so these are non-biodegradable which are not decomposed by bacteria example polythin okay other than this we can say uh, more example of pesticides okay we can take ddt also in this we can take aluminium you know can also in this
Now these all are referred to as biodegradable or non biodegradable substances and these are referred to as the biodegradable one. Now you know what do you mean by pollutants? The one which causes pollution, right? Now let us see our next segment that is atmospheric pollution. Now comes our important topic. Atmospheric pollution is basically air pollution. Air pollution is the one there we can say that basically it is the addition of undesirable materials into the atmosphere, into the air which leads to you know the harmful effects on plants, animals, human beings, right? So if I would say air pollution is defined as the addition of undesirable materials into the atmosphere or into the air either due to natural phenomena which is occurring naturally, right? Or due to human activity that we all do, you know, human activity. We humans are also responsible for causing a lot of pollution. Yes, why not? So students over here, they are saying the one which is automatically caused that which means that is natural process and the another one that is causing the, you know, the humans. We humans are causing some of the pollution through the vehicles, I would say, or you can, uh, you can see the vehicles, right? So the pollution that is caused from them is air pollution, right? So we can say which uh, adversely affect the quality of the air and hence the affect the life on the earth right right students now let us talk about you know earth if i talk about earth and its surroundings i would say if for example this is earth right if this is the earth at 10 kilometer from earth sea level at 10 kilometer from earth sea level troposphere is found which layer is seen troposphere layer and from troposphere you know at 40 kilometers from troposphere at 40 kilometers or i would say from the sea level at 50 kilometers if i am talking about the sea level it is 50 kilometers. If I am talking about only from the troposphere, it is 40 kilometers, right? Now, this layer, the second layer is stratosphere. Now, here I am writing this again. It is 10 kilometers. I am writing over here. Do not get confused. This is 10 kilometers. This is 40 kilometers. It combines to 50 kilometers. Now, if I am talking about troposphere, it is at the 10 kilometers from the Earth's sea level. And basically, stratosphere lies at the 40 kilometers from the troposphere or 50 kilometers from the sea level. Is it clear? Now, these are very important because we are going to learn what is the tropospheric pollution and what is the stratospheric pollution because we are talking about atmospheric pollution. So, we are going to talk about all about atmosphere. That is occurring in our atmosphere now if i talk about what are the things that lie in the troposphere or what are the things that lie in the stratosphere first of all comes troposphere you know all the the climatic changes we talk about the weather changes we talk about you know all of these basically lies under troposphere you know over here i would say it is the climate change or i would say it is the weather change everything that you know we look over we look over in the troposphere we study in the troposphere right and if i am talking about the stratosphere here o3 is present that means ozone is present over here here ozone is present which protects from the harmful radiations of the sun which protects our earth from the harmful radiations for example students here is the sun here is the sun here is the sun. So, harmful radiations are caused by the sun. Now, basically what happens? Our stratosphere contains ozone which protects our earth from this harmful rays of the sun. Right? This protects from the harmful radiations of the sun. Harmful radiations coming from sun right very sorry okay these protect from the harmful air uh, harmful radiations that come from the sun in other words i can write over here also these are the harmful radiations
okay now students this you have got to know about what is troposphere what is stratosphere right now if i move forward if i go forward i am going to see the pollution the kinds of pollution the very first kind of pollution which i talk about is tropospheric pollution and the second one is stratospheric pollution. See, when I am talking about tropospheric pollution, the study of atmospheric pollution mainly consists of the study of the two following lower parts of the atmosphere, tropospheric and the stratospheric one. Tropospheric pollution is the one that is the lowest portion of the atmosphere which extends to a height of about 10 km from the sea level, right, I have already told you. And if we talk about stratospheric pollution, it is the region above the troposphere lying between 10 km to 50 km above the sea level. Is that clear? Okay, this I have already told you with the help of an example. Now come students of our first category that is tropospheric pollution. See, if I talk about tropospheric pollution here, which are the pollutants? Now, what are the pollutants? Pollutants are the one which causes pollution, right? So, the pollutants in the troposphere are basically gaseous air pollutants and another one are particulate pollutants, right? Students, if I talk about the gaseous pollutants, let us take an example. If I talk about SO2, you know, uh, which is seen from the industrial waste. Now, when it reacts with O2, it basically forms SO3. This comes from the industrial waste. Okay, so when it combines with O2, it forms SO3 and SO3 on further combination with H2O forms H2SO4. Now, SO3 on further combination with H2O forms H2SO4. Now, when students H2SO4 is produced, basically it causes a lot of diseases, it causes respiratory problems and mainly it causes a greenhouse effect also. Greenhouse effect also and also respiratory problems are seen. greenhouse effect is also seen right now students moving forward i will tell you about the gaseous air pollutants the very first gaseous uh, gaseous air pollutant is about oxides of sulfur that is so3 and so2 i just told you the example when so2 reacts with o2 it forms so3 so3 and further reaction with water forms h 2 so 4 which causes respiratory problems right so see what they are saying 67% is by volcanic eruption and 33% by metallurgy of sulfidos, combustion of sulfur containing fuels. you know, these are further responsible, right? Now, it in low concentration causes respiratory diseases. Now, when it is present in low concentration, respiratory diseases are being caused, which I have already told you. Example, asthma is uh, seen, bronchitis, bronchitis disease is also observed, you can say, emphysema is seen, irritation in the eyes, you know, high concentration causes stiffness in the uh, flowers, okay, and in the presence of pollutant, SO2 converts into SO3, which we have already seen, right, so there are basically, they have told you all the effects that is being caused with the low concentration and with the high concentration, now I would again recommend you kindly open up your NCRT, because this is a theoretical kind of, you know, session, so we are going to, you know, we know all the things. I know you all people know about pollution. So do not skip first of all. Do not skip because yes, there. if you are uh, looking towards this segment, I want you all to, you know, if you are getting any question in your examination, I want you all to get the full marks in this chapter. Right? So what you have to do is you have to cover the NCRT line one by one. So kindly put a highlighter or a pencil and underline the important points in time. Also underline them. Right? Now students, comes the second gaseous air pollution if I talk about it is of size of nitrogen. So if I'm talking about nitrogen, in nitrogen, the most pollutant gas is NO2. This is the pollutant gas. This is the pollutant gas basically. Okay. Now if I talk over here, mainly produced by combustion of fossil fuels at high temperature in automobile engines, mainly NO and NO2. They talk about this first of all, what is going to happen. See, N2 plus O2 forms NO, right? Now, NO on further reaction with oxygen at a particular temperature, which is 1483 Kelvin, it produces NO2, which is a polluted gas, which is a polluted gas. Now, what happens over here? See, now NO also reacts with, you know, ozone, ozone to give NO2. Here, this reaction, students, when NO is reacting with O3 to form NO2, 
in this reaction see what is happening n2 is combining with o2 to form n2 then no one for the reaction with o2 at a particular temperature forms n2 but when no on reaction with o2 instead of o2 it forms no2 see no2 is produced by both way either with you know with o2 and o3 both way but with o3 when you are reacting no this reaction is quite fast and when it is fast more amount of no2 is produced and as i told you it is a pollutant gas if no2 is produced in more amount then it is very harmful very very harmful so this this reaction is basically this reaction is very very harmful and it happens very fast okay it is also produced when lightning strikes then n2 and o2 combines to form no no2 and no3 you know what happens when lightning is there and no2 is produced because n2 and o2 both they combine with each other right students now what happens see this is quite easy concept that you need to remember very thing in they talk about nitrogen oxide you should know that no2 is a pollutant gas it can be produced by o2 it can be produced by o3 when it is produced by o3 it is harmful because it is fast right okay now students moving forward towards our effect section if i talk about effect we have already done this effect is basically respiratory diseases and seen you know co2 gases uh, basically what happens over here co2 also act as a gaseous pollutant if i talk about general co2 we have seen oxide of sulfur we have seen oxide of nitrogen now another gaseous pollutant i would say co2 You know, CO two is necessary for plants also, right? You know this thing. Now, CO two is necessary for plants, but the excess amount of CO two can cause greenhouse effect, right? Other than this, what effects can we see? We have seen greenhouse effect. You can write all the diseases which are mentioned in the previous, you know, slide. Okay, other than this, respiratory problems. You can write all the respiratory problems over here, right? And you can say you can see the irritation in eyes also. Right, students. Now moving forward, you can write all of these from the NCERT. Also, it is quite easy. Now coming to the next pollutant that is hydrocarbons. If I talk about hydrocarbons, what happens over here? So, the petrol and gasoline in the reaction, in the incomplete combustion, they produce unburnt fuel. What happens? See, when petrol or gasoline taken and incomplete combustion occurs, incomplete. combustion occurs so during the incomplete combustion what happens unburnt fuel is obtained unburnt fuel is obtained which contains which contains carbon parts which have carbon parts and due to this you know due to this what happened this basically this basically the hydrocarbon that is produced from the site is carcinogenic in nature that causes cancer you know so this basically it produces hydrocarbon which is carcinogenic in nature so this is really very important for you to understand right now let us read over here produced naturally they are produced naturally example marsh gas as well as they are produced due to incomplete combustion which i have already told you these are carcinogenic and causes irritation of mucous membrane there is a irritation of the mucous membrane in the eyes right they causes aging breakdown of tissues shedding of flowers leaves and twigs in plants so in the plants also they cause the adverse effect in human beings also in animals also right so this is really very important kindly mention if it is not given in ncert you need to write it down also clear now let us see about the oxides of carbon now if i talk about the oxides of carbon it is quite easy see what happens carbon monoxide you know how is carbon monoxide obtained when limited supply of oxygen reacts with carbon carbon monoxide is obtained which is quite harmful now what happens it is colorless it is odorless gas it is produced by incomplete combustion of fuels naturally it is produced by oceans or by decaying of organic matter by bacteria right other than this we have carbon dioxide which i have already told you carbon dioxide is produced naturally by volcanic eruptions respiration okay respiration process it is also produced by burning of fossil fuels by burning of fossil fuels you can also prepare co2 
Increased level of CO2 is controlled by green plants during photosynthesis. When there is an increase in the level of the CO2, green plants they do control with the help of photosynthesis. It is a greenhouse gas and responsible for global warming. Responsible for global warming, but yes, it is necessary also. But high amount of this can cause a uh, adverse effect, right? Okay, it causes headache, nausea, you know, all of these uh, problems, respiratory problems are seen, irritation in the eyes, skin issues. These all effects it causes, right? Now, if I talk about greenhouse effect and global warming, we have seen all the pollutants, right? Now comes what do you mean by greenhouse effect? See what happens over here. Basically, the sun, they, you know, put some harmful rays, right? Harmful radiations on earth. Now, what happens on earth? Some radiations are being transformed back, you know. They are radiated back. While some of the radiations move inwards the earth. Now, what was happening? Previously what happened, the stratosphere as we know contain an ozone, that uh, O3 layer, ozone layer. Now ozone layer role was to protect the earth from the harmful radiations. Now what happens to you? Ozone layer depletion, you all know, right? So what happened over there, when there is a lot of you know, harmful rays, rays approaching towards the earth, some of the rays, you know, uh, put uh, go inside. They produce a lot of temperature on the earth. Now what happens in the earth, we know that. We know that over Earth, what happens? We have a troposphere, we have a stratosphere. Now, whenever the harmful radiations come, some go back while some enter over here. Now, when students, some are entering over here, you know what happens? When they enter in the stratosphere, there is no problem because in the stratosphere, O3 is present, which is going to protect the Earth. But if they enter into the troposphere, students, when they enter into the troposphere, basically what happens? Basically, in the troposphere, they won't go back. They won't go back and will produce a harmful amount of a great amount of temperature on the earth's layer. Now here a great amount of temperature is produced. Heat is produced. A great amount of heat is produced over the earth. Now what happens? It is trapped. Neither it can go out. You know, the greenhouse gases, they don't, they won't let it to go out. The greenhouse gases won't let that, you know, temperature to release out. And due to, the, due to this, a lot amount of, you know, what happens, temperature increases on the earth, which causes greenhouse effect. Now, let us see. Some sunlight that hits earth is reflected back into space, while some becomes heat. Some goes inside and produces a lot of amount of heat because it is trapped into the troposphere. It should remain in the stratosphere. It is quite easy because ozone layer will protect. But if it comes into the troposphere, it is going to produce a lot of amount of heat. Greenhouse gases prevent heat from escaping into space, warming the planet. Again, this thing I'm telling you. Now, why does the temperature, you know, remains so much high on the earth? Because the greenhouse gases do not let the temperature to move out from the earth into the space. They stop it, right? That's why the temperature is increased day by day. There. Now, students, now students, let us read. This effect was discovered by Fourier. And the term was coined by Arrhenius. 70% of the solar radiation is absorbed by the Earth's surface. They absorb the, how much radiation? 75, you know. And remaining is reflected back. You can see how much is reflected back. 75% is present inside. They come inside the layers, right? Some of which is absorbed by the greenhouse gases, which increases the temperature of the atmosphere called greenhouse effect. Now, this is basically the greenhouse. If I talk about what are the greenhouse gases that prevent the temperature to move out in the, into the space, it can be CO2. If I talk about greenhouse gases, basically it is CO2, it is CH4 I would say, it can be you know uh, CFCs, other than this it can be O3, it can be N2O. There can be various examples, you can uh, take water in the form of steam. Yes, they are the greenhouse gases, you know, which causes, which, which doesn't let the, basically the uh, heat, the radiations to move out, right students? Now, now let us see the greenhouse gases in detail. If I talk about the very first one, it is CO2. It is produced by burning fossil fuels. They have told you one by one, one line that you need to no, just no for the knowledge sake, right? Now, questions asked from this chapter are also basically theoretical. So, I want you all to attempt it in a very good way. In your DPP section, you are going to get a lot of questions in DPP. Kindly solve it, okay? It will be a fun for you to do. So, because it is quite easy chapter, I would say. Now, if I talk about CO2, it is produced by burning fossil fuels. 
burning wood, respiration, etc. Present growth rate of CO2 is 0.5%, you know, okay. Now, if I talk about methane, it is produced by incomplete combustion of fossil fuels. It is 25 times more effective than CO2. Clear? Okay. If I talk about CFC, it is 1000 times more effective than CO2. Again, used in aerosols, cans, jet fuels, refrigerant and air conditioner, refrigerators, fire extinguishers, they, can, they are depleting ozone layer which is really, really, really harmful for us. Because if ozone layer is depleting, then who will protect our earth from the harmful radiation, right? Okay. Now, if I talk about N2O, 320 times as powerful than CO2 produced by the combustion of livestock waste, breakdown of nitrogenous fertilizers in soil, etc. These are the greenhouse gases. Now comes the next topic that is acid rain. If I talk about acid rain, basically, in acid rain, we are going to see, basically, Three are responsible for causing acid rain. If I talk of, of SO2, if I talk of NO2, if I talk of water. Okay, because all of these are, you know, going to cause acid rain. Sorry, not water, it is CO2. SO2, N2O, uh, NO2 and CO2. They all are responsible. How they are responsible students, what is the reason? See, what happens over here when CO2, you know, CO2 from the waste material, from the waste of the industries or I would say when it react with water it basically forms H2CO3 right it forms H2CO3 which further splits into H positive plus HCO3 negative now when it is split into H positive and HCO3 negative this basically causes acid rain other than this how SO2 is responsible if I talk about the next reaction that SO2 on reaction with O2 what does it do? See, SO2 on reaction with O2 and with water, also with water, produces H2SO4, which is again responsible for causing acid rain. Now, NO2 on reaction with O2 and H2, the third reaction, NO2 on reaction with O2 and H2, this also produces HNO3, which is responsible for acid rain. See what happens over here, this is the industrial waste, you know. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide emission is seen that is SO2 and NO2 and O2 also uh, CO2 is produced right. Now what happen in the form of water vapor they move in the form of a cloud then it is being converted in the form of water vapor that means in the reaction in the presence of the air as well as with the presence of the water right. So they react and they form sulfuric acid that is H2SO4 nitric acid that is HNO3 other than this H2 CO3 is also produced. Now these are basically responsible for acid rain, acid snow as well as acid form. Is it clear to you? Right? Great students. So this was about acid rain. Let us read over here. Acid rain is a byproduct of variety of human activities that emit the oxides of sulfur and nitrogen in the atmosphere because it is basically caused due to the industrial waste. So humans are responsible for that, right? Okay. Acid rain term was given by Robert Hughes. Acid rain has pH less than 5.6. It is quite interesting fact, right? Oxides of sulfur, nitrogen and carbon are acidic in nature which dissolves in water and causes acid rain. We have seen the reactions. Then CO2 is reacting with O2 and water producing H2CO3. When SO2 is reacting with O2 and water producing H2SO4. When NO2 is reacting with H2O and water it is producing ethane which causes acid rain, right? So quite easy reactions. Now students come to the Taj Mahal and the acid rain. It is quite easy concept, you know. Taj Mahal and acid rain, high level of sulfur, high level of sulfur and nitrogen oxides caused by combustion of kerosene, poor quality coal and firewood causes acid rain which reacts with marble and causes discoloring and disfiguring, you know. The Taj Mahal which was white in color has been a bit yellowish color in a bit light of slight of yellowish color. Why? Because it leads to discoloring and disfiguring. How? Because it reacts with marble. When calcium carbonate reacted with H2SO4, it produces CaSO4 water and CO2. Clear? Therefore, in order to save Taj, area including Mathura, Firozabad, Agra and Bharatpur called Taj Trapezium is switched over to the use of natural gas or LPG in industries because it is all caused by industrial pollution. Industry pollution is responsible for the discoloring because they produces SO2, they produces NO2, they produces CO2 which are responsible for acid. 
clear people are, people are also encouraged to use lpg as a fuel vehicles are encouraged to use low sulfur content diesel is a clear okay now students moving to the next part that is the particulate that is a particulate pollutants if i talk about particulate pollutants these these are basically minute that means very little solid uh, particles or liquid droplets in the air that causes the pollution are called as particulate pollution now what happens over here for a longer period of time they don't stay in the air you know for some time they stay uh, on the ground and whenever the heat or i would say the air passes on they are again moved into the atmosphere some of the example of if i talk about you know you have heard a heard a word about you know um smoke you know you have seen about smoke you have seen dust mist so particulate pollutants are smoke dust mist all of these are what particulate pollutants if i see the very first that is smoke how is smoke obtained students smoke basically is a combination of smoke and fog fog it is a combination of smoke plus fog now this is the most common example of air pollution right okay that occurs in many cities throughout the world is it clear students now comes our next part that is the types of smoke you know these are basically classified into classical and photochemical one thing that you need to differentiate and you need to remember is classical smoke basically students occurs in cold humid climate while photochemical smoke occurs in warm dry and sunny climate this is really very important if you put a star mark over here it will going to be help you out now let me tell you about more about classical smoke classical smoke is also known as london smoke or reducing smoke as it contains smoke fog because it is a combination of smoke and fog so it will have right and sulfur dioxide with it right if i talk about photochemical it is known as los angeles smoke or oxidizing smoke now this is reducing smoke this is oxidizing smoke as it contains o3 pan and no you know nitrogen oxides oxides of nitrogen particles and it occurs in warm dry and sunny climate so this basically is the important part that you need to underline or put a star now comes effect of photochemical smoke if i talk about effects of photochemical smoke first of all we need to understand what is responsible for photochemical smoke basically if i talk about the formation of uh, photochemical smoke there is a chain reaction that occurs over here now what happens how is chain reaction observed now see if i say no to basically you know photochemical that means that occurs in the presence of sunlight occurs in presence of sunlight is it clear now what happens over here see if i take no2 which is a gas you know in the presence of sunlight what happens over here that means in the presence of sunlight that means h new energy right so it splits into no as well as nascent oxygen is oxygen is produced over here this is nascent oxygen this is what this is nascent oxygen now what happens this nascent oxygen further in combination with oxygen you know o2 forms ozone that is o3 forms ozone now what happens no on reaction with ozone we have already seen this reaction and no that was produced here on reaction with o3 forms what forms no2 as well as forms o2 now no2 we know that it is a pollutant gas this reaction we have already seen before this is a pollutant gas which is responsible for causing pollution so what is happening over here see you took no2 and the reaction was occurring and after that at the end of the reaction again no2 is produced so this is basically what a chain reaction see and then you are using no2 and you are getting again no2 and which is you are in a high amount no2 because this is a fast reaction in a high amount it is produced so it will cause adverse effect because again and again and again and again a pollutant gas is being produced is it clear is it clear so this is basically responsible the effect for this is because pollutant gas is produced it will cause respiratory problems other problems you know so yes now students comes how can photochemical smog be controlled you know by controlling uh, primary precursors of photochemical smog such as no2 
hydrocarbons if we can control these all so we can control the further reactions also if first reaction is being controlled second by controlling secondary precursors such as ozone pan etc third is by plants which metabolize nitrogen oxide example pinus juniperus you know all of these plants pyrus lictus all of these which metabolizes nitrogen these can be used by using catalytic converter which prevents the release of nitrogen oxide in hydrocarbon clear so this way these are the ways from which photochemical smoke can be you know controlled now comes the next kind of pollution we have done the first kind of pollution that is the tropospheric pollution now comes the stratospheric pollution again stratosphere is basically when seen from the troposphere it is at a 40 km but when seen from the earth sea level it is 50 km right now if i talk about stratospheric pollution what happens over here i have already told you in stratosphere ozone layer is present that means formation of ozone will be seen right so it says molecular oxygen splits into free oxygen atoms by uv radiations which combine with molecular oxygen to form ozone now what is this reaction see here formation and breakage both occurs now if i talk about formation now if i am talking about formation what happens see o2 basically reacts with o that is the nascent oxygen leading to the formation of o3 in and by uv radiations right now comes the breakage reaction now what is the breakage reaction in breakage reaction o plus o2 basically what happens over here it again breaks this reaction was seen first o3 this was seen now seen see this carefully this was produced this was the first reaction formation one now o3 again can be broken into o2 and o now basically this happened now when there is a depletion in the ozone the depletion in the ozone is responsible for the formation of free radical okay now which is also not good for us why it is not good for us because ozone is protecting our earth from the harmful radiation and if this ozone is you know again uh, depleted into again it is you know decomposed into oxygen and o2 the depletion level basically leads to the formation of free radical which will cause pollution clear now students if i talk about the effects of depletion of ozone layer what happens over here if i talk about fluorofluorocarbon cf2 cl2 now what happens in cf2 cl2 i have already told you that free radicals will be produced so what is the very first free radical which is produced over here cl radical is produced over here and other than this yes if one cl is taken out it will be left with cf2 cl radical right now what happens now students we know that there is o3 that is being produced in the previous reaction so what will happen this cl radical basically combines with the ozone now when this is combining with ozone it will lead to the production of cl o radical plus now here o2 will be released one oxygen will combine with this while two oxygens are left over which forms o2 now what happens over here here you know that this o2 this o2 is produced in now stratosphere it is being produced in stratosphere and when it is being produced in the stratosphere it is really really bad because it will consume o3 it will consume o3 so this is harmful this is this is a thing that we don't require other than this students other reaction can be seen is that this clo radical basically now it reacts again with o2 again with the so2 it will react it will lead to the production of cl radical plus o2 so this o2 that is produced basically will consume ozone and when it will consume ozone ozone will be less it will be depleted which will lead to the pollution clear okay students now comes our next kind of pollution that is water pollution we have already done air pollution i want you all to take 5 minutes and revise quickly till then i'll take a glass of water right students i hope so you have revised it and i know that there is no need to revision also because it is the concept that we have started already yes there are some reactions but if you open your ncert you will be very clear with each and every reaction and with my lectures right okay now comes the next kind of pollution that is water pollution now again 
when there is an undesirable change you know which affects the quality of water right which will cause harmful effect in the drinking in the you know the sea animals they are affected by this so that is water pollution now let us see any unwanted change which causes which deteriorates or you know reduces the quality of water and make it unfit for drinking due to that which we are unable to drink that water right pollution of water originates from human activities pollution sources are of two types now over here in the water pollution it is point sources and and non point sources if i talk about point sources it involve discharge from identifiable points example discharge of waste water from factory now if i talk about non point source involving discharge from unidentifiable points it includes discharge from land run off you know from atmospheric wash out these all so these are of two sources right if i talk about the causes for water pollution i know, i know in your smaller classes you would have written the essays on this right what is water pollution what are the causes what are the effects so you all are familiar with this but still i will be reading for you because there are some things that you will need to know okay which you don't know in the previous classes so very first cause of water pollution is organic matter such as leaves grass trash as well as excessive phytoplankton growth in water they causes water pollution you know now this is really important this is a quite different concept right as this matter is decomposed through microbial activities known as fluidity which requires oxygen degree of impurity of water due to organic matter is measured in the terms of bod that is biochemical oxygen demand now to check the degree of impurity in the water you need to know about the bio you know you need to know about biochemical oxygen demand that is bod now what happens see for clean water bod should be less than 5 ppm that is parts per million whereas in highly polluted water it should be more than 17 ppm that is 17 parts per million bod is the amount of oxygen required by bacteria to break down organic matter present in a certain volume of a sample of water clear now comes the next cause that is the pathogens the very first was organic matter right this for example leaves trash all of these stuffs or uh, we can say uh, as well as the excessive phytoplankton that is being growing in the water which causes water pollution now comes pathogens disease causing agents are called pathogens for example virus bacteria fungi all of this protozoa algae human excreta contains e coli you know bacteria and streptococcus bacillus bacteria which causes gastrointestinal disease you know there are a lot of diseases being caused due to these pollutions which adversely affect our health now comes chemical pollution okay there are two types inorganic and organic one inorganic contains acid salts heavy metals such as you know uh, cadmium hg nickel and heavy metals can damage the central nervous system the liver the kidney right organic pot, uh, pollutants constitute pesticide petroleum uh, pollutants detergents you know all of these stuffs and polychlorinated biphenyls are also there which are carcinogenic in nature and phosphatic fertilizers increases the algae growth again responsible for the pollution which is unfit for drinking right okay the process in which nutrient enriched water bodies support a dense plant pollution population which results in depleting oxygen level hence killing animal life hence results in the loss of biodiversity is called eutrophication you know this definition is also important kindly put a star in your ncert is it clear okay students now let us see the measures to control water pollution again there should be a treatment of the sewage you know first it is churned properly by the machines then pass into a tank where heavier particles settle down then following the pure water is sterilized with the chlorine then it is treated with alum and lime this is the treatment now next the treatment of industrial waste first its ph is determined then it is neutralized with acid or alkali dissolved chemical substances can be precipitated by the chemicals are great nowadays we used ion exchangers and photocatalysis for the treatment of industrial waste clear okay now comes the next kind of pollution see water pollution was quite easy i would say if i talk about soil soil pollution now unfavorable alteration of soil by addition or removal of substances you know and factors which decreases its productivity its quality you know both of the, the things 
of plants and ground water is called soil pollution basically the quality of the soil which gets you know uh, which gets affected is soil pollution mainly caused by chemicals added into the soil for example pesticides herbicides fertilizers for better productivity now these chemicals reach in human beings through food chains and causes harmful effects because that food we take if we intake that food and we are having a lot of problems due to that which causes harmful effects now comes the causes for the soil pollution as summed up in the previous line first is pesticide if i talk of pesticide they are actually synthetic toxic chemicals with ecological you know uh, repercussions these are used in killing pathogens pests and in inhibiting unwanted growth in agriculture horticulture forestry water i guess this is the thing that you already know i there is no need to explain over here it is just to sit and read in the ncrt these points right okay now students uh, i guess this you can read this is not necessary for us to see uh, the next is fertilizers again just like pesticides it is the fertilizers excessive use of fertilizer decreases the natural microflo uh, micro microflora hence deteriorate or decreases the soil or it affects the quality of the soil right okay other than this students we have industrial waste now we, if i talk about industrial waste over here i have two kinds of waste that is the biodegradable and non biodegradable if i talk about industrial waste they are both solid and liquid and are dumped over the soil okay now what happens over here these contains toxic chemicals like mercury copper zinc lead cadmium cyanides acids alkalis all of these now what are biodegradable one which includes waste by cotton mills food processing units paper mills textile factories or by this is biodegradable if i talk about non biodegradable it is gypsum from fertilizer industries mud and tailings from the metal industries slag from the steel industries fly ash from the thermal power plants all of these stuff right so this is basically the biodegradable one and the non biodegradable is it clear to you great now students if i talk about the prevention over here let us see the prevention the very first prevention is cement industry can utilize fly ash and slag okay the next is basically small quantity toxic waste are removed by burning in open bins and large quantity by control you know in salination these pollutants can be removed by various processes specified by pollution control board now this is again the prevention method that you need to remember you can write on your own also let us see students our next segment over here now we have green chemistry now green chemistry is basically the chemistry that we are going to use to save our environment how can we do to see green chemistry is focused on processes and products that minimize the generation and the use of hazardous waste you know the production i would say it minimize the production and the use of the hazardous waste it increases using of those addition reactions which do not produce these hazardous by products or the harmful by products it reduces its effect right it emphasizes to choose those starting materials which can be converted into end product with 100% yield and which are not harmful for the environment green chemistry is a way of thinking and is about utilizing the existing knowledge and the principles of chemistry and other science to reduce the adverse impact on environment so this is the thing that we can use to save our environment right utilization of existing knowledge base for reducing the chemical hazards along with the development activities are the founder of green chemistry clear i hope so now you know what is green chemistry now how can be green chemistry used in our day to day life it is really important you know tetrachloroethane basically was earlier used ethene sorry tetrachloroethene was earlier used as a solvent for dry cleaning now when green chemistry came h2o2 is used you know so it is quite easy right see tetrachloroethene was earlier used as a solvent for dry cleaning the compound contaminates the ground water and is also a suspected carcinogen now if this is a carcinogen you know it is replaced by h2o2 now what happened the process using this compound is now being replaced by a process where liquefied carbon dioxide with a suitable detergent is used replacement of halogenated solvent by liquid co2 will result in less harm to the ground water these days hydrogen peroxide as i already told you h2o2 
used for the purpose of bleaching H2O2 is the process of laundry which gives better result and makes the use of lesser amount of water so it has best better results also right so this can be used now the next thing in day to day life is about bleaching uh, of paper see over here now chlorine gas was used for like for bleaching paper these days hydrogen peroxide again with suitable catalyst now catalyst can either increase the reaction or decrease the reaction depends upon which catalyst we are using right which promotes the bleaching uh, action here we are using a positive catalyst which basically increases the reaction okay now what happens of the hydrogen peroxide that is being used now comes synthesis of chemicals ethanol is now commercially prepared by one step oxidation of ethene in the presence of ionic catalyst in aqueous medium with a yield of 90% you know you can see in the presence of catalyst now ethanol basically is now commercially prepared we prepare ethanol from this ethene is it clear students so by this way green chemistry is used in our day to day life students it is used in our day to day life so yes students uh, this ends our chapter we have seen air pollution water pollution industrial pollution soil pollution and green chemistry right so these all are the things that we have already studied but yes now we have done in a symmetrical manner we have read all this i want you all to practice your dpp because all of the questions are theoretical so you'll practice in the dpp you will get to know how the questions are being asked because many of the questions are some of the previous year some of are from the good books right now students this also ends our organic chemistry of class 11 but as you all know the, that every story has an end but in life every ending is just a new beginning so i would just say never never give up in your life you know just practice we have covered all the lectures of the class 11 of organic of physical chemistry of organic chemistry also so i want you all to practice more and more questions and whenever you are stuck in a particular uh, question kindly go back to that video or go back to your notes re revise it and utilize that concept in your questions you will be able to achieve it until and unless you do it right so never never give up again this is not the end it is it is just a start of a new beginning right students i wish you all the good luck for your uh, examination so keep smiling keep learning thank you so much have a good day